so good morning everybody and welcome to our service here on the Sunday before Advent. This Sunday has historically been called Stir Up Sunday and that's because the collect for the day begins Stir Up. I'll read it to you, it's the collect in the Book of Common Prayer. Stir up, we beseech thee, O Lord, the wills of thy faithful people, that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works, may be, may of thee be plenteously rewarded, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This Sunday has been traditionally the day when Christmas puddings and Christmas cakes have been made. Thus, aligning it to the collect Stir Up Sunday. However, in the Book of Common Worship, this Sunday is dedicated to the festival of Christ the King, and we shall be celebrating that this morning. We begin our worship by singing, Praise my soul, the King of Heaven, to his feet thy tribute bring. So with you. Let's join together in saying the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. O King, enthroned on high, filling the earth with your glory, 
Holy is your name, Lord God Almighty. In our sinfulness we cry to you to take our guilt away and to cleanse our lips to speak your word. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins, open our eyes to God's truth, strengthen us to do God's will, and give us the joy of his kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we'll praise God in the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the Collect for Christ the King, um, the Stir Up Prayer, as I mentioned earlier, uh, which was the Collect for today, is now the post-communion prayer, so listen out for that one later. So the Collect for Christ the King. Eternal Father, whose Son, Jesus Christ, ascended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things as Lord and King. Keep the Church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace, and bring the whole created order to worship at his feet, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now Jenny is going to read to us some verses from Psalm 95. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God, a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and the dry land which his hands have formed. O come, let us worship and bow down, let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Thank you, Jenny. And before our gospel reading, we'll sing King of Glory, King of Peace.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory and the nations will gather before him. He will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly, I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you. And now Reverend John is going to share his thoughts with us today. Reading from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23. Shame on the shepherds who let the sheep of my flock scatter and be lost, says the Lord. Therefore, these are the words of the Lord, the God of Israel, about the shepherds who tend my people, who have scattered and dispersed my flock. You have not watched over them, but I am watching you to punish you for your evil doings, says the Lord. I will myself gather the remnant of my sheep from all the lands to which I have dispersed them. I will bring them back to their homes and they shall be fruitful and increase. I will appoint shepherds to tend them. They shall never again know fear or dismay or punishment. This is the very word of the Lord. A lesson from the 23rd chapter of St. Luke, beginning at verse 33. There were two others with Jesus, two criminals who were being led away for execution. And when they reached the place called the Skull, they crucified him here, and the criminals with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. They divided his clothes among them by casting lots. The people stood looking on and their rulers jeered at him. He saved others. Now let him save himself, if this is God's Messiah, his chosen. The soldiers joined in the mockery and came forward, offering him their sour wine. If you are the king of the Jews, they said, save yourself. There was an inscription above his head which ran, This is the King of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there with him taunted him, Are not you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, Have you no fear of God? You are under the same sentence as he. For us it is plain justice. We are paying the price for our misdeeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. 
and he said, Jesus, remember me when you come to your throne in the kingdom. And Jesus answered, I tell you this, today you shall be with me in paradise. Luke 23 in verse 42, and the criminal said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. In the extremity of his torture and on the brink of death, a man who was utterly helpless recognised Jesus, dying in torment beside him, recognised him as a king and begged to be remembered. The desperate sincerity of this wretched man cannot be doubted. And the vast, the vast reassurance gasped out by Jesus would, I hope, have given some balm to his blighted soul. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. In those kindly words, the king embraced a dejected, rejected subject. Now, this scene is one of high drama, as are all the words from the cross. Shakespearean theatre is, is loud with the maelstrom of human emotion which swirled around Cal Calvary. Look at the notice, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Nazareth? Where's that? A king, did you say? A king? Stripped, hanging, thorns about his bleeding head. A parody of kingship, surely. Avert your eyes. Let's, let's away home and leave the poor fellow to his dismal fate. Why do we call Christ the king? How can this Jesus be hailed as a ruler? When Jesus had, to Pilate's dismay, declared that his kingdom was not of this world, when he had said that his kingly authority came from elsewhere, Pilate asked a direct question. So, you are a king. Speaking of kingship was important to the Roman who protected the Pax Romana stability under the emperor. But kingship to his prisoner meant something different. King is your word, said Jesus. I speak of truth. No wonder poor Pilate was at sea and in the end gave in to the manipulations and the blackmailing of the bloodthirsty crowd. Willy-nilly, the so-called King of the Jews, had to die. I admit to feeling sorry for Pilate, who in the name of Roman justice had tried, had tried to free Jesus, but who in the face of Jewish turbulence had to condemn the hapless preacher. A king to Pilate was a potential threat to Caesar. To the Jewish authorities, a self-styled king who claimed kinship with God was a vile blasphemer. He had to die. So Jesus of Nazareth, reviled king of the Jews, is there any reason for us in the 20th century, any reason for us to call you king. If a king or queen are persons whom we hold as exalted, exalted above the hoi polloi, the likes of you and me, it has to be because of the specialness of the royal person. Our queen, Elizabeth I, is, I firmly maintain, special in her devotion to the duties of her office, and I've little doubt that the succeeding kings, Charles, William and George, 
will likewise earn our continuing respect. We are glad to bow before the person we call Your Majesty because we recognise in her a faithful adherence to the service of her people. She is the servant queen. Like the good shepherd in the Jeremiah passage, she leads her flock to home and safety with righteousness because she herself, she herself bows before who her king, who is God. So it is with Jesus, whom we call Christ. Jesus, Christ and King. His identifying with man in the paths of compassion and forgiveness and his pointing the way to closeness with the God whom he called Father blazes a trail for us through the thorn bushes of our living. God save the Queen, we sing with full hearts. And so our search for the sovereign of our souls, in this search, we sing, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, the Jesus who most certainly holds for us, even us, the regal place in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Thank you, John. So in response, let us affirm our faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of being and life, the one for whom we all exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, Pauline is now going to lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious Father, you have made your Son King of creation and Head of your Holy Church. Bind that Church to Christ with cause of love. We gladly give honour to you, who not only saved us from our sins by your cross and resurrection, but also ascended to the right hand of God. Make us a praying Church, that every aspect of our lives be filled with your power with faith and hope, and most of all with love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord God, whose sun is fairer than sunlight and moonlight, sparkling stars on the radiant beauty of this good earth, give us all who love the beauties of this created world a deep and everlasting love for the uncreated light and supreme beauty of your Son, the word by which all things were made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, thank you for giving us a king unlike any other. Let the light of his life bring joy to our hearts as we face our present troubles. By your grace, assist us to get into the true spirit of things and show you a worship fitting your sublime humility. We know we have fallen into sin under your judgment. Our only hope and comfort lies in Christ the King to redeem and sanctify us. Grant us faith in him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hold us up, dear Lord, in your hand of mercy. Help us to look beyond the present to see our future. You know what thing you have planned for us. Help us to trust in your wisdom and to live by faith in the crucified and risen Christ in such a way that it brings us hope in his eternal, universal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, on a day only you know when the Lord Jesus Christ will come in power and glory to triumph over all evil and tragedy and to establish God's full dominion in this world as it is in heaven. 
Prepare us for that day to come. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now the peace. To crown all things there must be love, to bind all together and to complete the whole. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. You may like to share a sign of peace with those who are around you. The Lord is here. God's spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks because you anointed Jesus Christ, your only Son, as priest and King. Crowned with thorns, he offered his life upon the cross, that he might draw all people into that kingdom where he reigns in glory. Therefore, with angels and with archangels and with all the company of heaven, we praise your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praise, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit. Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of all who stand before you in earth and heaven. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Now, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is the Lord. 
to the glory of God the Father. Amen. The blood of Christ. O oh, come to our hearts, Lord Jesus. There is room in our hearts for thee. As bread and wine, as food and drink enter our being, we ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into ourselves. O oh, most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly day by day. Amen. Lord, in these days of challenge, make us stronger in you. In these days of emptiness, take possession of us. In these days of waiting, open our hearts to the mystery of your cross and the glory of your resurrection. Amen. And our prayer after communion. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works, may by you be plenteously rewarded through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let's lift up our voices as we sing our final hymn, Rejoice the Lord is King.
Christ our King, make you faithful and strong to do his will, that you may reign with him in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest upon you and those whom you love, now and forever. Amen. So thank you for joining us today. And we all look forward to seeing you in person again before too long. In the meantime, please do keep safe and go in peace in the name of Christ. Amen.